the uh, sacred mountain to Snatchen to the east and sort of to the south and you'll go see to the west and the bends are to the north <laughs> We're uh, here near the uh, sacred mountain to the uh, west, uh, referred to sometimes as San Francisco Peak, sometimes Mount Humphreys. But to our people, it's called the uh, Dio Conce, is uh, the way we refer to this mountain. The uh, translation of the word Dio Conce, many times people say, we don't know what it means. But uh, as some of the old people used to say, Diokon means underneath there is fire. Diokon. And then they say Diokon Sri, which means the top of it remains white and glitters and white during the uh, seasons of the year that is late into the summertime. And so the uh, mountain itself, this was a place where herbs were collected and uh, Ceremonies were sometimes performed here as well. And of all of the mountains, this is probably the one that with the uh, most sacred soil was collected from this uh, San Francisco peak or this mountain of the uh, sacred mountain to the uh, west. And so the teachings are that people, uh, the Neh lived all around this area for many years. And there's still, you know, some of the people that have uh, become the Neh more recently, which were the many goat people and the black sheep people, which we call the Neh or the Betajan, the Neh, occupied much of this area through here and around to the, uh, toward the edge of the Grand Canyon and out toward the uh, flatland areas. Uh, Wapaki is sometimes uh, referred to this area that there are some ruins. A lot of times people think that they, those are Anasazi ruins, but uh, some of the old people say no, that is people that became the Neh. And there are many people from this area there that became the Neh as well. So the edge of the uh, rim, before you drop down into the lower land, is uh, the Mugion Rim just south of the San Francisco Peak. And that area, all of it, was uh, occupied by the Neh. And they say that the Tango people, Tanis uh, the Neh, or sometimes referred to as uh, the salt people, the salt clan. And uh, of course coming this way in more recent times, the black sheep people and the many goat people, all of them uh, occupied these areas, these clan families. And so this mountain here to the, uh, the sacred mountain to the west, the Logosi, it has a name and it has a lot of history with the people that occupied this area. And so much of the herbs in that that were collected annually and that came from this mountain. And uh, the teachings are that there are certain songs in that that apply to, to this mountain by itself, like all the other sacred mountains as well. But more so to this one here. I don't, I'm not sure as to why this was the most uh, sacred of all of the mountains that the Dene recognized. And uh, there's stories in that that uh, in recent times there was a large forest fire and that, that burned much of the uh, this particular side of the, uh, the mountain, which is the east side of the mountain. And they say that that is a warning to all of the people of the region that uh, if things don't improve, that there's going to be fire and burning and that there's going to be experience of, uh, plus the shortage of so many things that we depend on for our daily lives. And so there are still a lot of teachings in that associated with what we are told about the Diokosi uh, and uh, the teachings of our old people. And those are the things that we are told. Hey, thanks for watching our videos. If you like what you see, don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of our uploads. Also, head over to our website, NavajoTraditionalTeachings.com. Sign up for our email list. I can't.